Before doctors and hospitals and medication, early humans needed to rely on each other and their environment if they got sick or injured. And well, some of the medical practices they took part in are quite questionable, considering how far we've come. From eating dirt to cleanse the body to smearing poop all over your body. Let's talk about this and more only in today's video. Starting off this countdown, we have geophagy. This is a practice in which early humans would eat dirt in order to heal themselves. It all started when they saw animals eating clay and dirt and they were like, hmm, if it doesn't make them sick, let's try and eat it as well. Maybe they're eating it for a reason and we should be too. So whenever people were sick, they would eat dirt or clay. Doubt that it tasted very good and not sure what it really did for their bodies, but they did it. Coming in at number nine, we have the powder of sympathy. This was a form of sympathetic medicine that was used in the 17th century. Basically, this special powder was put on a weapon that inflicted a person a wound and it was said to heal the injury. Yeah, you heard me. The treatment was placed on the weapon, not the actual wound. So the powder was made up of green vitriol that was first dissolved in water and then afterwards recrystallized in the sun. Apparently, the Duke of Buckingham healed his secretary who was suffering from gangrene by soaking his bloody bandage in this solution. I don't know, it just sounds crazy to me. Moving on to number eight, we have the cuts and broken bones. Back in the day, it was fairly common for humans to get scrapes, cuts, or to break their bones. That's because they would have to compete with animals for food, as well as run away from animals who were their natural predators. So if they did get a cut, obviously they didn't have band-aids back then, so they would use mud. Once the wet mud or clay was put on a person's skin, it would dry up and seal the wound. For broken bones, clay was also used. The broken bones were cased in a pot made from mud. It's pretty resourceful if you ask me. In our seventh spot, we have the painkillers. Imagine going through a massive surgery nowadays without painkillers or getting a headache and not being able to cure it with Advil. It would suck pretty badly, right? Well, back in the day, early humans actually had painkillers. They used poplar. Poplar is a plant that contains salicylic acid, which has pain relieving, anti-inflammatory, and temperature lowering effects. After studying dental calculus on the teeth of Neanderthals, they found traces of poplar, suggesting they ate this plant in low doses as a painkiller. In our sixth spot, we have the animal cure. So according to the ancient Egyptians, a number of animals had natural curing properties. For example, lizard blood would be used as a topical ointment, whereas dead mice were used as bandages. Not only that, but horse saliva was said to cure a woman's sex drive. So women with a low libido were often doused in horse saliva. How great does that sound? Did it actually work? Who knows? But the Egyptians thought so. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the animal dung. So like I just mentioned, animals were thought to have curing properties. In fact, their poop was thought to be a cure-all. So Egyptian physicians would use donkey, gazelle, dog, and even human dung in their remedies. It was thought to be good for healing and to ward off bad spirits. However, it would seem as if most of the times people would develop tetanus and other infections after using excrement on their body. But believe it or not, research shows that the microflora found in some types of animal feces actually contains antibiotic substances. So uh, there you go. They were definitely onto something there. In our fourth spot, we have corpse medicine. Sounds gross, and that's because it definitely is gross. Back in the day, an elixir was given to people suffering from persistent headaches, muscle cramps, or stomach ulcers. What was in this magic elixir you say? Well, human flesh, blood, or bone. This was called corpse medicine and was around for hundreds of years. So back in the day, Romans thought the blood of fallen gladiators would cure epilepsy. So when a Roman gladiator lost their life, their blood was collected and then sold as medicine. The Romans believed that the warrior's blood had magical powers. Sometimes they would even take out the warrior's liver and eat them raw. Again, thinking that this would cure them. 
In the 12th century, people would grind up mummies looted from Egypt and make something called mummy powder, which was also supposed to have healing properties. Now, the type of medicine that you received depended on your ailment. For example, if you suffered from headaches, you'd be given a treatment made out of a dead person's skull. If you had muscle aches, you'd be given human fat, so on and so on. In fact, people would attend executions just so that they could collect a cup of fresh human blood. Moving on to number three, we have the Babylonian skull cure. During ancient Babylonian times, most illnesses were thought to be caused by a demonic entity or were a form of punishment from the gods who were angered by your wrongdoings. Therefore, the doctors back then acted more as priests or exorcists instead of actual doctors. So when people were sick, they would perform magical rituals to cure them. For example, let's say that you had a bad habit of grinding your teeth at night. The doctor would then make you sleep by a human skull for a week as a way to exercise the spirit that was causing you to grind your teeth. They thought maybe a spirit was trying to contact you in your sleep. Anyways, this treatment gets even more messed up. Aside from the sleeping next to the skull, the individual had to also kiss and lick the skull seven times each night. Yes, you heard me correctly. I'm just glad that we no longer practice this because I'm constantly grinding my teeth at night. Moving on to number two, we have bloodletting. Thousands of years ago, early humans believed that sickness was a result of bad blood. So what way to cure this than to get rid of the bad blood inside of you? Hence why the practice bloodletting became a thing. It's said that this practice started with the ancient Sumerians and Egyptians but didn't become a common practice until the classical Greece and Rome time period. Hippocrates and Galen believed that the human body was filled with four substances, yellow bile, black bile, phlegm, and blood. If they got sick, they believed that that meant that the person had bad blood. So they would cut a person's vein and drain some of the blood. In other cases, they would use leeches to suck the bad blood directly out from their skin which, you know, obviously it's a risky business to just cut a vein. And as a result, a number of people accidentally bled to death. And in our number one spot today, we have trepanning. Back in the day when people suffered from seizures or migraines or mental health issues, they were treated by a procedure called trepanning, which basically involved drilling a hole into the human skull. It's said that this would free the victim of the demon or evil spirits inside of them, causing them these issues. Scientists first discovered this procedure after analyzing cave paintings from the prehistoric people. After the procedure was complete, if the person was still alive, they would actually keep the part of the skull as a good luck charm. This is said to be one of the oldest forms of surgery in history. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below which one of these medical practices you found the craziest. And now, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 diseases in outer space that are horrifying. Wes Gunton commented, Lindsay's impression of a bear cracked me up, sounded more like a kitten. Yeah, don't go back and watch that, please, just don't. Uh, sometimes I do things and I, I just realize that they're gonna be on the internet forever, so. <laughs> uh, great. Low key commented, Lindsay, 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 honey. It reminds me of that viral video where the little kid's like, Linda, 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 honey. That's probably what he was doing. That's funny. I like it. And Zen Raven 7 x commented, literally 99% won't see this, but I am secretly an alien lizard man and the whole Earth's governments are my people. Good to know that aliens can type and that they, oh no, he's not an alien. Oh no, he is an alien. He's an alien lizard man. Whatever, it's a good thing that Alien Lizardmans watch YouTube. So, you know, smash that like button, please. And now a bunch of people are seeing this. So you were wrong about that, sir. You were wrong. All right, guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you.